<laughs> Whoa, that wasn't too bright. Inside this trailer, that echoed pretty bad. Anyway, what's going on, everyone? It's obvious I'm not in my usual warehouse, but where am I? Hint, it's totally related to today's topic and DCP model to review. Get one while supplies last with the link down below. Give up? I'm in a Wilson cattle pot livestock trailer to talk about, well, livestock trailers. The goal of the transporter is to have his load of animals arrive alive and well. When you hear someone describe a livestock trailer as a bull hauler, a cattle liner, a cattle pot, they are talking about a stock trailer used in the transportation of cattle. There are several other kinds of livestock trailers for hauling chickens, pigs, sheep, goats, and horses. These stock trailers are very specialized to handle the animals with care. It is important to use the right livestock trailer to transport farm animals. For example, horses, a horse trailer, or a specially designed horse van. For a lot of cattle, a cattle trailer would meet the farmer's needs. A livestock trailer designed to move a large number of cattle at one time has to consider the safety of the cattle. Right above me up here is a drop down ramp so that you can load cattle into the upper deck. The interiors of these trailers are incredibly complex to balance out the load for the safety of the cattle and the driver. Safety for the cattle is of the utmost importance. Some of the safety and comfort features that have been built into cattle trailers and other types of livestock trailers are. Cattle trailers have interior dividers, well-designed floors, and interior padding, all of which are designed to ensure the cattle are safe from injury and are reasonably comfortable when being moved. In front of me, you can see a set of steps to help the cattle get into the section over the fifth wheel. There is also a fold-down floor section so the cattle don't get on the steps while riding and break legs. Comfort. Apart from the interior padding, these trailers are designed to provide plenty of ventilation to ensure the animals are comfortable. Air must flow freely in all parts of the trailer. If you look all around me, you can see the punched out holes in the side, which let light in and plenty of air for the cattle to keep cool and breathe. Noise can cause stress for the animals, considering that most of them become nervous about riding in these vehicles. Trailers that use screws, bolts, and mechanical fasteners may produce metal-on-metal -metal scraping noise when in motion and stress the animals. Shifting animals can be deadly for the truck driver as well as the cattle. Consider the amount of live weight suddenly shifting from one side over to the other. The sudden shifting may cause an accident. The gate over on the other side of the floor section is to keep the cattle pinned up so they can't move around inside the trailer. The purpose of the dividers throughout the trailer and specially designed floors are to prevent shifting. The dividers provide a good place for the cattle to lean against when the trailer turns, speeds up, or slows down. They will keep the cattle from shifting back and forth. Shifting cattle will change the balance of the trailer, making it hard to pull and or control. What to look for when looking for a livestock trailer? Look for poorly designed butt and chest bars, weak interior dividers, small windows, and other air vents, little interior padding, weak wall linings, and aluminum flooring. It is important that you choose a well-designed livestock trailer to haul or have haul your livestock. But most important, choose the appropriate kind of trailer to haul or have haul your livestock. As a loader and unloader of livestock, 
your safety is as important as the animal safety. Be sure you make sure that all the latches are latched. Make sure all the safety chains are fastened securely. Trailer brakes should be inspected and wheel bearings replaced if needed. Inspect the tires and electric wiring. The trailer floor should also be sturdy and clean. The first feedlot cattle trailers were designed in the 1960s with a tandem truck and box. And since that time, trailers have become way, way more sophisticated, including going from one deck to two decks, adding gates within the trailer, and increasing the weight a trailer can haul. The modern pot trailer has a drop center, which lowers the center of gravity and helps prevent rollovers. Some of these trailers can haul nearly 90,000 pounds, depending on the type and the number of axles. A three axle trailer can haul 89,500 pounds, whereas a two axle can haul 80,000 pounds. With this brief background on the kinds of livestock trailers and the features built into them, let's turn to the DCP livestock trailer and the Kenworth W900A for COPS truck line. It is a 53 foot tandem axle built by the Wilson Trailer Company. I did a video about the Wilson Trailer Company a while back. If you've not seen that video, please see it by clicking the link below after you finish watching this video. Now to head on over to the rock quarry. And here we go, guys. This is the Kenworth W900A model day cab pulling a 53-foot tandem Wilson livestock trailer. Isn't that sharp? It's for Cops Truck Line of Cascade, Iowa. Starting off with the trailer, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail because in my video on Wilson trailers, I go into a lot of detail on this particular trailer. Also, the successor company to Cops Truck Line, DNL Truck Line of Cascade. But anyway, it is a nice punch side trailer, and how they did that was with photo etched metal, so it really looks like a punch side, but be careful running your finger on it. It's actually fairly rough and could possibly cut your fingers, so be careful handling these trailers. It has 10-hole modern wheels on the rear and soft rubber tires. Screw down landing gear, nice detailed underneath, and it has a kingpin for DCP first gear, advantage die cast, top shelf, and even Neo scale models trucks. Air brake canisters on the rear axles. Super, really super detailed truck. Now, it has a red top on it. And then you can see it has red trim on the back of the truck. There's also red trim up on the front. It's the Silver Star with the logo there. It's got Cops of Cascade, Iowa, a family tradition since 1955, right there on the Tampo. And there's the Wilson Trailers logo. It has a little photo etch piece to protect the brake lights underneath the uh, uh, door on the chute side. Wilson Trailer Company mud flaps on the back the door does open so you could put cattle in and it's got all the decking and everything else on the inside really sharp over here another great punch side pretty cool now to the front you can see a little more red trim here right at the bottom and red up here from the top on the um, letter board it has cops Silver Star logos there, and then Cascade and Iowa there. And also you've got all your little warning stuff. It's also on each corner here and here, you see the trailer number, which this is trailer number seven. This is a really nice trailer that they made. One last word about the trailer. It does have the screw down type landing gear. Now, let's look at this beautiful A model Kenworth truck. How about that paint scheme? with the big red triangle right down there. Really, really nice. It's got the white paint around the chrome air breathers on the side. And then there's a truck number in a, of number one in a black circle right there on the breather. 
Cops truck line, Cascade, Iowa on the door. Door latch is Tampa. All this chrome diamond plate battery box is there. Fuel tank back here with its Iowa and U.S. DOT numbers. All of those numbers that are, were required then right there on the fuel tank, which is painted red. Chrome ladder, chrome quarter fenders, and chrome brackets to hold the rear mud flaps. The newly tooled 10-hole bud style wheels, the old Alcoas, and these do look like the old ones. It has soft rubber tires, and then on the front, it's they're all chrome. There's no little tampos on them. Marker light there. Chrome mirrors, chrome exhaust stacks with the 45 miters on the top. There's a grab bar here so you can climb up, and there's one on the passenger side. Inside the cab, low back seats, black steering wheel, and dashboard are all in there. This dashboard seats are gray. There's also a gear shift, which is black. passenger side another breather with a truck number cop truck line on the doors you can see the big thick muffler and then the nice tailpipes for heat shields they just used a decal with black dots on it turn signal on each fender and a marker light down just above each of the headlights little black mud flap there this has got the battery box on the passenger side and then the fuel tank back behind which would have been under the sleeper, but it's behind the exhaust, behind the cab on this day cab. Up high, two chrome air horns. Then you have the roof marker lights. Those clearance lights are just cast into the cab. Then they tampoed some silver and orange-yellow orange, orange -yellow paint so that you have lenses. It has a visor here, which is uh, painted in white on this one. It's not chrome-plated. You can see the body lines that are molded into the top of the hood. And they did a really nice job with the red and white paint scheme. Also, you can see back here, you can see the um, chrome deck plate. On the back, this guy has Kenworth branded mud flaps here on both sides that are black with the chrome brackets. Then it has the brake lights. It has a fifth wheel that is for DCP and first gear trailers. Pogo stick. See the grab bars. Also, two nice little white stripes that go around the back of the cab. Red, black, and then a back window. Really, really sharp. Underneath, licensed by Packard, tampoed under this step. Air tanks, fuel tanks. Brown, cream engine. Then it's got the Transmission, drive shaft, rear working suspension, air brake canisters, differentials, all the niceties we're used to. It has positionable steering, not true steering, but it's positionable, and spring front suspension. On the front, that beautiful Kenworth grille, Kenworth logo tampoed there, individual jewel style headlights, nice bumper with driving lights tampoed in. Up. You can see on this one, it's got the black windshield wipers tampoed on that are molded in the glass. And then it has the black outline around the windows. Really nice that they can make these different. I kind of like the silver because it's more common, but that's okay. Maybe these guys painted them. There's the marker lights and then there are the turn signals. The marker lights are molded into the fender. The turn signals are individual parts applied to the fender. Before I hook him up, I thought I should show him off in the box. Standard DCP by First Gear box, ages 14 and up, 164 scale die cast replica. Two piece blister on the inside and the mural there. Then I'll show you the item number. And there it is. It's 60-1010, COPS truck line. And there we go. That is the Kenworth W900A model for COPS truck line. It's a day cab pulling a 53-foot tandem Wilson livestock trailer. Who all is a livestock truck collector? Let me know down in the comments below how many you have. For all the truck collectors out there, this beautiful W900A will set your collection off. So go on and get one while the limited supplies last with the link down below. Keep in mind, this truck was so popular that DCP had to make a second production run. 
and the second production run sold out just as fast as the first. So don't delay in ordering this model or you will miss out. Thanks for watching everyone. Please smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and tap the subscribe to join the 64th Gear Jammers. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.